We're all told not to touch the art when we go to a museum. But at the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco, there's a team of conservators who don't just touch the art. They gild, glue, strip, swab, dunk, and erase it. Tony Rockwell is one of 12 conservators who tend to the ongoing care of the 200,000 artworks in the de Young and Legion of Honor collections. Every painting on the walls in the museum here is under constant observation. All the paintings have been worked on to some degree or another, so it's a really ongoing system of care that's necessary to maintain these fabulously and valuable and important works of art. Tony got his start in the 1950s as a conservator's apprentice. Since then, he's restored hundreds of paintings, from Egyptian mummy portraits to this still life by Picasso. My father worshipped Picasso, and I grew up with viewing Picassos and being dragged to the Museum of Modern Art constantly. And, and finally, to actually be able to work directly on the surface of Picasso is, is just a tremendous thrill for me. When the old earthquake-damaged de Young Museum was torn down in 2001, 20,000 artworks had to be moved to a secure warehouse outside of the city, a temporary home until the museum reopens. The downtime is giving Tony's colleague Carl Grimm a chance to catch up on some long overdue work. Okay, Daniel, take this again. I'll go backwards. Go backwards. At the top of the list is the museum's prized Boatman on the Missouri by George Caleb Bingham. Before any restoration begins, Carl consults with curator Danielle Cornell to determine how the work may have originally looked when it was painted in 1846. Carl is part of a new generation of conservators. With a PhD in the field, he's received a rigorous education that combines art history, studio art, and science. We're going to look at the painting in, under ultraviolet light, and we'll see any areas of old retouching, they'll appear dark. We're seeing areas of retouching on the painting. It uh, gives us some indication of where the areas where the lost areas, damaged areas are. And this is relatively recent, mm -hmm. but all of this was done past since, uh, since the 1960s. 1966 is when 1966 the painting, 1966 is when was, the painting was, was, found was found restored under a bed not long, in La Jolla. Restored not long after that. Mm. Before work begins on the paint surface, Carl conducts additional tests, analyzing every square millimeter of the painting. Using infrared video, he visually penetrates through layers of paint to check the condition of the underlying canvas. And with a high-powered surgical microscope, Carl can look inside the many cracks that crisscross the paint surface. If the paint's loose along any of the cracked areas, it could conceivably flake off, which is, of course, something that we absolutely do not want to have happen even on a microscopic level. Preserving the artist's intent is extremely important. So what we're doing essentially is removing all of these earlier restorations and taking this painting back to as near as possible its original state. Then we re-restore it so that it's uh, really a state-of-the-art museum quality restoration. I just kind of grew up with art uh, around me. We all painted in the family. My dad painted uh, beautiful watercolors and landscapes and portraits, and, and I just painted, and my sister painted, and it was just a way of life. I couldn't really believe it when I, I, I was suddenly in a studio with, with Cezanne's out of the frame, and, and I was able to pick one up, and a huge Monet water lily painting came in. I mean, it was discovered in somebody's barn, and there I was, you know, so, so close to the surface of this painting. And uh, it was tremendously exciting. For Tony, the job still offers the thrills he enjoyed earlier in his career. A case in point is this 17th century portrait of St. Peter. For 60 years, the painting languished in museum storage, all but forgotten, until recent suspicions led to a remarkable discovery. A curator of European art talked to an El Greco expert who happened to be in town, and he said, you know, you ought to have this painting cleaned. I think there might be something really wonderful under all this murkiness. And as we got down through the murky layers of old varnish and grime and overpaint, and little by little, this wonderful brushwork began to emerge that looked like El Greco. 
So we're very excited about this painting. It's almost like finding an El Greco in your storage area that you didn't know you had. We're operating from scratch in terms of conservation. There aren't any records on the previous treatment of this painting because the treatment was done so far in the past, probably uh, late 19th century or early 20th century. This is the painting after all the extraneous materials have been removed, what remains of the original. Here's a painting that's been extremely abraded, it's been damaged, uh, there, there was a fold here, creases and so on, uh, it probably was crumpled at some point that's caused some of these, these uh, losses to occur. So we want to uh, bring back the artist's hand to, to, the, to as great an extent as we possibly can. And I'm in painting them to match as closely as possible the original paint that surrounds them. This is a, a very different approach than what was done in the past when uh, this whole area probably would have been repainted by a restorer. For larger areas of loss, for instance, in this fold of the fabric, you've got to understand the brush, the brush stroke and you know, how the, the lines of the brush stroke follow through that area and try to recreate that. I, I don't know that anyone can be more intimate with a painting than a conservator. It's a, it's a great privilege, really to be able to, to study the paint surface that closely. And then the, the intimacy that you achieve by studying every little square centimeter of the surface, you begin to get a grasp of how the artist manipulated his paint and you know the, the whole emotion that must have been behind the creativity that went into it. You realize that uh, you're right in contact with a, a work that may be hundreds of years old that was created by the hand of a great master. It's quite extraordinary and quite a, quite a gift to be able to do this.